What's up, everybody? So, you may have noticed that my videos are very different now. <laughs> um, two reasons for this. Well, let's just be honest. One big reason. I can actually focus my attention and energy towards expanding my knowledge of the world and world events. Um, primarily. But I'd still like to keep them focused somewhat around narcissism because I see just too many correlations. You know, at this point, the uh, the red pill has been swallowed, digested, and shat out already. Um, but once you take it, there's no change in it, you know. There's no going back. So I like to kind of discuss now really just worldviews and how I see narcissism correlate with it. And it's very, very creepy. Um, so there was a, a famous quote. I won't tell you by whom because then you're going to get your panties in a bunch and get sand up your vagina and all that bullshit and, and be pissed off. But it says that paraphrased of course I don't remember the exact quote a bastardized culture is an easy to control culture or a controllable culture now let's start to think about this with old America a bastardized culture <laughs> we've had this discussion before where America really doesn't even have a culture we've had cultural spurts but we've never had a solid American culture in the way that, you know, um, European countries with a lot of history have had, or, or you know, other Japanese, Chinese. They, they have a solid cultural basis. America's never really had that. Um, and I have to say, the one thing that America did have going for it was, you know, strong family um, ties, strong family, you know, um, dynamics per se. And then that all changed. Changed into what I would call basically the lost generation. I've called our generation a lot of shit, the Saved by the Bell generation, because we're all, you know, Essentially, the Saved by the Bell generation idea was that our, our my generation and the generation younger me was raised on this escapism TV where everything's going to be all right. You know, everything's going to work out. But that's not really how the world works now, is it? But now I just see it as a lost generation. Um, a generation with no culture, no... Um, no, no home, no place to be. And why is this? Primarily, you know, my generation, the generation around me, you know, we were raised, uh, our, let, let's back this all up. <laughs> let's, let's, let's back this all up a little bit, actually. In about, you know, roughly six years, 60 years ago, feminism started. Now, I don't have anything necessarily against feminism. People take it too far a lot of the times. Feminism started, where women wanted to start working and so on and so forth. And it is my view, agree or disagree, that the start of feminism bastardized a lot of our family dynamics. You know, rather than than the 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 husband going to work and being the primary breadwinner. You know, women started to work as well, which is fine. You know, women working, hey, all for it. But what happened to the family dynamic? Now you have kids that are left alone all day with no guidance, no substance, no no rhyme or rhythm. They're not taught their ancient cult. Ain't not to say ancient, but sometimes ancient ancient cultures are. Their, their their purpose in the world, where they came from, what they're about. They're not taught the fa the family dynamics. They're not taught, you know, what is right, what is wrong. 
these kids are being raised, you know, in preschools and daycares and just school in general. And then after hours, these kids are being raised by TV and Internet. They're not being raised by an actually family, an actual family unit. So we have, you know, this is my view on feminism. Sure, you want to work fucking great. But we have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years of evolution that have put these gender roles in place for a reason. You know, for a reason. You know, 200,000 years of, of, you know, human evolution, those gender roles evolved for a reason. And then 60 years ago, we want to say, oh, no, those aren't right. Those aren't right. You know, those, those are stupid. And they're like, they're there for a reason. And look at what has happened when we decided to say, hey, these aren't right anymore. You know, men and women are equal. Wait, I'll explain that in a second. Men and women are equal. We can do the same stuff, blah, 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 blah. We're both equally good at everything. And it's horseshit. Psychology has fucking completely showed it that men and women's brains work differently. Now, does that say that we are not equal? No. But we are good at different things. Okay? Women, for the whole fucking history of human evolution, have been caretakers. Men have been breadwinners, hunter and gatherers. This is just how things have worked. It always has worked that way. And then we decided to change it, and it fucked us. So, an analogy, like I said, we're equal, just different. So don't give me all in this, like, you're a fucking, I don't know what you call it, um, misogynist or whatever. I don't, I don't fucking know. It's the same thing as in, like, high school. You had the jock that was just phenomenal at football. And then you had the, you know, like, computer nerd that was phenomenal at just, you know, IT and computer stuff. Are those two people, can you claim that one of those two people is better than the other? No, you can't. They're just good at different things. This is much the same as men and women. You're just good at different things. So don't come at me with all this bullshit about misogynistic crap. It's not there, okay? Psychology has proven it. Science has proven it. We work different ways. We are better at different things. That does not say that one is better than the other. Okay? However, gender roles had their place. They had their, 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 their role, their, their function in society. And then we took all that away. We took that away. And we left children either raising themselves or being raised by, you know, their siblings, or being raised by their school, or being raised by TV, or being raised by internet. So you have entire generations that are essentially lost souls. They they don't have a sense of purpose, uh, a, a home, a place to belong. And that's vastly, vastly important for people to succeed and be healthy. You know... If the only way a kid learns culture is by what his friends are saying at school or what he sees on TV, that is no culture. That's just, that's a fad. That's what's going on at the moment. This is just, this is not a home. This is not a permanent thing. You know, previous to this, in, in my grandparents' day, in my great grandparents' day, they were taught, okay, this is what our family has done from generation to generation to generation to generation, so on, so on, so on, so on. This is who we are. We are Dutch. We are Irish. This is what we fucking do. You know, they had a, at the very least, a sense of home, a sense of this is who I am. And then you had the, you know, the, the culture that went along with it, you know, the, the holidays and the certain little things. And kids these days don't have that. At least American children don't have that. They still have this in other countries. So you have this entire couple of generations of bastardized 
children with no purpose, no home, no culture. <laughs> and at the surprisingly, at the exact same time, we see depression levels skyrocketing. You know, um, what do you call it? Um, oh, I'm totally forgetting the word now. Anyway, unemployment is skyrocketing. You know, depression is skyrocketing. Crime is skyrocketing. Look at all these stupid fucking riots and bullshit that are going on. Um, we, essentially, what I see is a world of horseshit. A world where nobody knows where they belong. I'm just going to say most people don't know where they belong. So what happens when you don't know where you belong? Number one, you're easily manipulated. This is much in the same way as after the narcissist breaks you, after they break your will, then that's when they real, like, real, real abuse starts. That's when they really start to fuck with you. Because you're you're lost, you're homeless, you've been disconnected from all your friends and, and, and family, and now you're 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 solitary, and they can do whatever the fuck they want to you. Correlate that to the solitary child, and then the media and internet and all this other bullshit that he has to listen to all day. It's much the same way as the isolation tactics of a narcissist. And then you take, um, oh my god, I just completely lost my train of thought. Give me a second, I will remember. Yes. So, you have this, this these children, all these children, this whole generation that are lost and, and, and hopeless and depressed and they're depressed because they have no purpose. They're depressed because they have no home. What do they do? What, what do people in that circumstance do? They grasp for anything they can find that gives them a sense of purpose or a sense of culture. And 99% of the time, that's media. Um, we've talked about the black community before. This is why the black community holds on to hip-hop and R&B as though if it, it, it is their culture. Of course, that's not an actual culture. That's not a sense of culture. It's not a sense of being. But it's the only thing they have to grasp onto. And now you have a whole generation grasping onto, you know, the Kardashians and Instagram and Twitter as if this was some kind of home. This was some kind of being. This is some kind of wellness. It's not. The thing is that the people don't realize this. People aren't thinking about this. And they're not seeing the correlation between the depression and suicide levels and the, the just discontent levels, the unemployment levels, and this at the same time. And now I don't know why people aren't seeing that correlation. It's pretty obvious to me. Main point being... <laughs> main point being, my generation and younger than me is pretty much uh, fucked unless I get given some kind of direction. Um, there's no way that, you know, TV and internet are sustainable, sustainable senses of culture or, or, or normality or home or you're not going to raise a healthy family off of that by any means, you know. Uh, these, these fads are not consistent of a culture and a purpose. Um, so we're, yeah, we're going to see some really, it's got, it's gotten bad, but it's going to get worse and there's no doubt about it, um, until we can kind of figure out, uh, well, what I would say is honestly, until our culture becomes unbastardized, you know, it's just going to have to be that way. It's, it's not working. I just heard some really weird noises outside. Um, it's not working. <laughs> that kind of scared me when my hand came up. I was like, what the fuck was that? It's not working. We all can see that now. 
So when are we going to do something about it, right? And unfortunately, this all started, in my mind, this all started with, with the, like, the 60s, with the feminism movement, and the, the, the whole want to say that gender roles are, are not... Dude, those are some really fucking freaky noises. I don't know, it's like a cat fight or like possums, raccoons. What the fuck? Okay, I'm gonna sleep good tonight. <laughs> Any, all right. So gender roles had their purpose. Okay, they did. That was another. You know, gender roles had their purpose in culture, and they had their purpose in a place to be. You know. Even if somebody was raised, uh, you know, as a bastard child and, and, and from multicultural, you know, instances and so on and so forth, it's still gender roles applying still gave them a sense of purpose. I am a man. I can do this. I am a woman. I do this. You always had a sense of, of a role and a purpose and a place to be. And at this point, we've we've... And that's, that's only one of the many, many facets of this. But we have completely raped our entire country of any identity or roles or anything. So people are just clinging to whatever they can. You know, that's why you, you see these adamant, like, uh, hyper-aggressive groups about, you know, one, number one, one of Black Lives Matter. It gives them a role and a purpose. You see, you know... Um, Guys that like to game a lot, they get like hyper aggressive and very groupy and clicky because, once again, sense of purpose. Feminism in and of itself gives women a sense of purpose. You know, if all else fails, at least I'm a member of the feminist group. You know, and you can see this with, with men as well, with like MGTOW movements. Well, all else fucking it sucks, but at least I'm a part of this group. I have a place to belong, I have a place to this. So I hope you see where I'm going with this, how our culture in America, has, and mostly all over the world, that goes with the um, Ellen, I don't know, fucking gay community, goes with them too. I mean, they're one of the biggest victims of not having a place in the world or a sense of purpose. And now look at their community. Um, it's huge. It's phenomenally huge and powerful uh, and tight-knit. That's the only place they can, you know. Um, but anyway, I hope you get where I'm coming with or coming from with this. Um, tell me what you think. Um, this is kind of uh, off the cuff talking about it, but you know, I heard that quote: "A bastardized culture is a manipulated culture," and it's, <laughs> I just saw too many, just too much. I mean, it was just blatantly obvious. And then I, I started thinking about how it correlates with the, the narcissist. And after they bastardize you, they start to control you and manipulate you and fuck you. Um, and, and it's just too fucking creepily similar. You know, um, you know, these kids are growing up on this media. Imagine if this media has an agenda. You have a whole generation doing exactly what you want them to do. That's a scary fucking thought, guys. That's a scary fucking thought. So, anyway, I'll end it there. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it inspired you, made you think a little bit. Tell me what you think. And uh, I'll be done for now. Sorry Boo wasn't in the video tonight. She's um, out on the sofa taking a nap. So, we'll see you next time. Alright.